In this module, let's look at how tools calculate cell delay. In this module, you'll learn how to identify the cell delay information that comes from the libraries, and also how these table lookup models are used to calculate the cell delay. A gate or cell has one or more timing arcs, and each of these timing arcs has a propagation delay associated with them. This propagation delay through the cell is commonly known as cell delay. We calculate cell delay based on the intrinsic delay of the cell, the load it's driving, and the input transition. Propagation delay is the total delay between when the input signal changes state to when the output changes state. This is commonly known as cell delay. You can break down cell delay into transition times, and intrinsic delay. Transition time is when the pin changes state from low to high or high to low. Intrinsic delay is the delay of the cell when there is no input transition or output load. The propagation delays are measured from the input threshold percentage point to the output threshold percentage point. Most commonly, we measure the cell delay from 50% of the input signal to 50% of the output signal. If you look at the libraries, these input threshold percentages and output threshold percentages are given for both rise and fall. We measure the delay from the input signal to the output signal based on these library percentage thresholds. In this example, we are measuring the cell delay from 60% of the input to 40% of the output because the input threshold is given at 60%, and the output threshold is at 40%. You'll see a lot of different data for any cell in that particular cell model inside the library. Each cell model in the library defines what the cell footprint is, what the area of that cell is, what are the various pins of the cell, what are the directions of the pins? What is the output function for each output pin? Based on this information, library characterization tools can create for example cell delay models for you to use at the different slew and load variations. These tools can also determine transition times, power dissipation, the yields etc. based on different input variables. All of these different things are listed in the library as calculated values in a lookup table format. There are two main models for cell delay in the Liberty libraries. The 2D cell delay lookup table uses the input slew and output load as its input variables to look up the values of the delays. The 3D cell delay lookup table uses the input slew, the output load, and also the related output load. If there are multiple outputs for example Y and Y bar, then to calculate the delay to Y, you use the output load as seen on pin Y, and the related output load as seen on Y bar and vice versa for Y bar. The accuracy of the lookup tables depends on the accuracy of the simulations of such characterization tools. The values from these simulations are plugged into your LIBS or the Liberty Library models, which you will then use in your static timing analysis. This is an example of a 2D lookup table model shown in a visually understandable table. In the example, the slew is plotted on the y-axis here and the load is plotted on the x-axis. For example, for the slew of 1.05 and for a load of 0.3279, it's showing 0.3643. You would determine that based on the lookup table, and that's what the tool will also do. In a 3D lookup table model, you also have the related output load as seen by QN. This illustration shows the slew axis, the load axis, and load 2 axis. For this lookup table, the related output load has two values. Once you locate the slew and load axis, for the third axis, we use load 2, and thus calculate the delay based on load 2. If the delay doesn't fall on any of these load points, then the tool interpolates the values to arrive at your cell delay. Try the following activity to reinforce your learning. 